In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips and tricks for providing your students with feedback using Seesaw, which is an online portfolio where your students can add their work. If you are not already subscribed to 4Teachers, please do that now by clicking the subscribe button, which is under this video. I've been posting lots of videos about remote teaching and teaching from home and setting up your virtual classroom, and I hope to continue making this style of video for as long as it is useful for those watching. Without further ado, I will share with you how to give student feedback using Seesaw. Okay everyone, welcome to Seesaw. This is how it looks for me using a computer desktop. It will look different if you are using an iPad or a phone, but if you are using your desktop computer, this is what it will look like for you as a teacher or as somebody who is in control of the Seesaw class. In the past, I have used my class Seesaw to show examples. However, that takes me a really long time to edit out the names of the students and to make it private. So what I have done, you might notice I am using the four teachers class which is a completely made up class all the students featured on here are just random names they are not students that I am teaching additionally all of the work that has been posted in this video as an example is made up and it is made by me so it's not real examples of work in the previous seesaw video that I posted we looked closely at activities and how to assign them for students in today's video we're going to be looking at ways to provide feedback for students based on the activities that they have completed so my class are here on the side right now I can see that most of them haven't added any work given that they are not real but I have put some examples in there of a few different types of subjects for us to have a look at today and give feedback to. So if I was to click onto Alice right now I can see that she has added a response to an activity called describe a day at the beach. Now what Alice has done is she has gone onto the activity, typed in her responses and added it over the top of the template that I provided for her. So the first thing that I can do to give Alice some feedback is I can click the like button which is down here. It's just a love heart and all it does is it tells Alice that her teacher has liked her work. It's really simple, it doesn't require much energy or effort, but it's a really good way of acknowledging some work even if you don't have time to give feedback on every single piece of work that your student has done. A little love heart is just a nice way of saying, I've seen it, I like it, and I have a feeling that my students really like seeing things like that on their work, even if it's not very complicated, it's just a nice, simple way to check in with them. The next thing that I can do with Alice is I can leave a comment on her work. So I might say something like fantastic work I really like how you decided to add some descriptive words such as warm and soft for the sand I might also want to give Alice some feedback or some steps that she can take to improve her writing and make it even better so I might say something like can you add some connectives to link your sentences now the thing is it does take quite a long time to type comments every single time on Seesaw. So in the past what I have done to solve this problem is I've created a bank of comments. So if you have a quick look on this note document here you will see that I have got some comments ready for my students offering feedback that I can copy and paste into Seesaw. Things like thank you for sharing this piece of work, I especially like how you added words to describe. Excellent writing, you've really focused on improving your word choices and using ambitious vocabulary. I like how you used something to describe the something. And I can take this and copy it and put it directly into Seesaw as a much quicker way of providing feedback for my students. Now that I have sent this comment for Alice, she has the ability to type a reply to me and she also has the ability to go back and edit her work so she can add in some of the improvements and suggestions that I have given to her. Another amazing and useful feature that I like to use when I am using Seesaw to provide feedback is this little button down here. This allows me to do an audio record and record my feedback for a student. Now the amazing thing about using this is that sometimes you can say a lot more to a student than you could possibly type in the time that it would take you to type it. For example, if you wanted to give a student some really constructive feedback based on a video that they had made or a big project, actually saying it out loud probably gives you a lot more opportunity to give really specific feedback and you can kind of speak a lot faster 
faster than you can type, or at least I can anyway. So I've been using this a lot recently to give my students really specific feedback and also just to check in with them and say hello to them as well. I think they really appreciate it. So if you just click on the voice record button, all you have to do is press the microphone and it will start recording your voice. When you are finished recording, click the pause button, it will process and then you can post it directly to your child. You can listen, you can check it sounds okay. When you're happy, click the tick and it will send it straight to that child. So now that we've finished giving Alice some feedback on her writing, I'm going to show you a different way of giving feedback on Seesaw. So what we're going to have a look at now is Greg, my imaginary friend, has added some information on his worksheet called Telling the Time. This is an assignment that I've posted for the students. And as you can see, Greg has responded by typing over the top of the assignment that I gave him. So I can tell straight away by looking at the work that Greg Greg hasn't got all of the answers right. Now what I could do is I could type in the comments and I could say have a look at question two, I think you might be a bit confused and I could offer him some help. But did you know that on Seesaw you can actually edit and you can tick the work and you can edit over the top of what has been submitted? If you click on the three dots that are down here in the corner and then click on edit item, it will open up the piece of work so that you can see the whole thing. Now what I can do is I can take this pencil or pen tool down at the bottom of the screen, click it, I can choose a colour, so maybe I can go for green for the questions that he's got correct. And what I can do is I can easily add a tick or a cross next to his answer to let him know how he's got on with this task. So next to 60 minutes, I'm going to give a tick. Next to 10 days, which is unfortunately not right, I'm going to put a cross, or you could just leave it blank if you don't use that kind of system in your school. And finally, how many hours are there in one day is correct, so I can give it a tick like that. He has also correctly shown what 3.30 looks like on the clock, so I can give him a tick down there in green. Final thing that I'm going to do for Greg's work before I move on to the final piece of work is I'm going to show you how to add a private teacher comment. Now sometimes students might do things on their work that you want to make a note of but you don't want them to find out about. Uh, for example if you've taught something and they've really not got it right but you want to make a note of that for your future planning you can add a private note. If you click on this button at the bottom of the screen which is a T inside a speech mark it will take you onto a page where you can create a private note to give feedback to the student that the student can't see. So for example I might type myself a useful note such as Greg isn't sure of how many days there are are in a week. Um, remember to include this in tomorrow's lesson. Greg can't see it, his family can't see it, so it's completely private and it's just useful for me to have saved as part of my notes in case I need to revisit it. Now that we have discussed editing student work and adding feedback by actually drawing on top of the work, I'm going to show you something else that you can do that's really useful for organising your students' work into skills. Now what I've got here is a piece of work from a student called Stephen and I can see that Stephen has responded to a task called dots and dashes which is a phonics activity looking at graphemes in words. Now what Stephen has done is he has actually written over the top of the words and he has written down the number of sounds that he can hear in the words. So for pat, at, is three. So the first thing that I can do is I can edit the work just like I did last time. I can put ticks on, uh, ticks and crosses where he's gone wrong. And then the next skill I'm going to show to you is this small little graduation hat button at the bottom of the screen. Now that's the skills button where you can tag the different skills that a child has achieved through a piece of work. This skill is only part of the paid subscription for Seesaw but you can click to try it free for 60 days. And I thought 60 days was quite a nice amount of time. That would take me all the way to the summer. Thankfully, the school that I am working at already uses Seesaw, so I do have the option to use it through my school account. But if you just want to have a try of this, or if you want to trial it as part of your school, then you can sign up for 60 days try it, see how you like it, and maybe you could suggest it to your school as something that they might want to look into purchasing in the future. So when you click on the hat, it will take you onto a screen here where you can tag and create skills to highlight what your child has achieved. What you are going to want to click next is this button here that says add new skill. Once you've clicked on that button, you can think of a name for the skill that you are tagging. So for example, Stephen has done a piece of phonics work here where he's had to sound out words. I know I can go more specific with this and I can give phases, but I might just want to say sounding out words as the skill that he has achieved through this task. 
I can give it a quick code so it's easier for me to search for. So you could give it a number, you can give it a acronym, I could say sounding out words like that so that it's easy for me to remember, but that will be personal to you. You can type in the subject, category, and you can even give it a description if you want. Once I click on the green arrow, it will add the skill and now I have it viewable and I can search for it as well. This makes it so much easier to add the skill for each child as you are going through your list. I can now click on this skill and I can choose to give Stephen a rating for how well he's done at that particular skill. I'm going to give him four stars. And then I can click on the green tick. That skill has now been tagged and Stephen now has that added as part of his online portfolio. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been useful for you to see a few different examples of ways to give feedback using Seesaw. Don't forget to subscribe to 4Teachers for lots of tips and tricks and websites and apps and all kinds of different useful things for you and your classroom. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.